both uh, gonads as well as the ducts of reproductive system go through um, in different stages would they look alike in both uh, male and female embryos. So in a transversal section through an embryonic body we will see the spinal cord, the notochord, then the dorsal aorta with its lateral segmental branches to the mesonephric tubules. Each of these arterioles ends with a glomerulus with a capillary loop where uh, the urine is filtered into a capsule, goes through a canaliculus, one of many canaliculi of mesonephros, and the, the urine is collected by the mesonephric duct. This is symmetrical on both sides. And this is repeated many times uh, throughout the uh, mesonephros. Another structure here on the skin would be the intestine, surrounded by ventral and dorsal mesenteries. And the dorsal body wall, which medially um, proliferates, the, 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 epi the mesodermal epithelium proliferates, to form a genital ridge, which is a primordium of a gonad. This is on both sides, on the left, left and right side. And I will add one more, uh, one more uh, duct here, which is also of mesodermal origin, therefore drawn in green, and it will be the paramesonephric duct. This will be the outline of uh, the mesonephros, which is a large organ going through the thoracic and lumbar region, and I will also add the mesodermal uh, body segments called somites. The point here I want to illustrate is that the gonocytes, uh, the primordial gonocytes, do not originate in the primordium of, of the gonad. Instead, they travel from the yolk sac endoderm along the or through the messengeries and they migrate into the gonads. This is a step that is necessary for further proper development and differentiation of gonads. It's also called homing of the uh, gonocytes as they are finding their home in the gonad. So this will be the spinal cord, the notochord, the somite, the dorsal aorta, its segmental branches, here the uh, canaliculi of the mesonephros, they are repeating many times because mesonephros is a segmentary arranged organ, so this is only one of many canaliculi. All of them from all of them, the urine is collected by the mesonephric duct. There's a eponym here, mesonephric or Wolfian duct, W-O-L-F-F, Wolfian duct. So this whole organ would be the mesonephros, quite a significant large organ in the embryonic times. One more duct here, also of mesodermal origin, is the paramesonephric duct. Also with an eponym called Müllerian duct, with double L. This is the body cavity, the coelom. It's lined with the uh, mesoderm. This is uh, ventral mesentery 
and the dorsal mesentery this thickening of the dorsal body body wall mesoderm is the genital ridge and that's the primordium of a garnet is a primordium the same for both the testis or uh, the ovary so we know the epithelial component here originates from the mesoderm as the color suggests and uh, this is the intestine and here are the gonocytes precursors of, sperma of future spermatogonia or ergonia and they will later on differentiate into uh, one of these but now in this at this stage they are migrating uh, from the yolk vesicle endoderm into the genital ridge where they will find their home because that's why this process is also known as the homing of the gonocytes in the future they will become spermatic sorry spermatogonia if the garnet will differentiate into testis or ogonia in case the gonad will differentiate into an ovary. If we uh, look more closely into this region of the developing gonad, we would see the epithelium of uh, the dorsal body wall of the, of, the, of the coelom cavity. It proliferates to form uh, this uh, network of, of trabecules known also as the sex cords as proliferating epithelium and here laterally I will explain the origin of the paramesonephric duct which originates by a process called invagination from the mesodermal cavity and here there will be the meso mesonephric duct, this one so we got the epithelium here, which proliferates into these epithelial trabecules. And we already have these gonocytes that migrated into the primordium of the gonad, right? So this is the coelom cavity. This is the proliferating mesoderm of the genital ridge. That forms the epithelial component of the gonad. Here we got the gonocytes. and these epithelial trabecules are also known as the sex cords. This is an uh, invagination of the paramesonephric duct. And this is the already present mesonephric duct. So I will use the eponyms also. It's a good thing to know these. The next scheme will 
show the relation of the gonads and mesonephros to these ducts. So we got the mesonephros, we got the mesonephros, and uh, the mesonephric duct, both left and right mesonephric ducts, they enter the cloaca. We got the gonads that are medially to the mesonephros and uh, the paramesonephric ducts goes from the gonads at first it goes laterally but then it will cross the mesonephric ducts and the left and right paramesonephric ducts will join each other, they will fuse and they will enter the cloaca together forming a uterovaginal canal. So this will be the wall of the cloaca. At first sealed by the cloacal membrane which dissolves in the seventh week approximately. So this is the primordium of the gonad. Still an undifferentiated, indifferent stage, whether it will become later on um, ovary or testis. This is the paramesonephric duct, the Müllerian duct. The left and right uh, paramesonephric duct, they form a uterovaginal canal. As the name already suggests, the uterus and, and a part of vagina will develop from these structures. They enter the cloaca, they are opening into the cloaca. Here is the uterovaginal opening, right? And this is the mesonephric duct, the Wolfian duct, that carries the urine from the mesonephros in the cloaca as well. Uh, in the following schemes we will describe the differentiation of these structures in male versus female uh, embryos. For this, uh, let us uh, only briefly explain then the indifferent gonad. How is it affected by the genes and some other factors? So, in an individual with the genotype uh, of 46 chromosomes from, from which uh, the gonosomal pair is XY, that's the genetically male individual. Uh, on the short uh, arm of the Y chromosome, there is a SRY gene, um, which is uh, a gene uh, controlling the origin of uh, the testis. So it forms the SRY protein. Uh, that is a transcription factor that uh, will cause the indifferent gonad to differentiate into the testis. So let's call the SRY gene uh, gene controlling the the differentiation of testis. That's quite an important gene. Formation of testis will be accompanied with uh, connecting uh, the tubules of mesonephros to the testis. 
and the mesonephros will become the epididymis, the rest of the mesonephros. Also, formation of testes will result in the steroidogenesis. Mainly formation of androgens by the Leydig cells. And also formation of so-called anti Müllerian substance or hormone by Sertoli cells. And together these factors result in formation of uh, the male phenotype of these ducts of the reproductive system and also the outer genital organs. In uh, an individual with 46 chromosomes, two of which are uh, a pair of X chromosomes, so a genetically female individual, the prevailing uh, cascade or signaling cascade is a WNT4 gene, which is a gene, let us say, determining the ovary. Let's call it the ovary determining gene, which, uh, in the absence of the SRY gene, takes control and results in differentiation of the gonad into an ovary. And this uh, uh, ovary uh, forms the uh, ovarian follicles, etc. Et in an individual without uh, the androgens, without testes and without androgens, the maternal and also placental estrogens will take control and result in uh, the forming the female phenotype of ducts, these two mesonephric and paramesonephric ducts, and outer genitals. So this is really uh, extremely simplified extremely simplified version, but just to understand what we were talking about in the next schemes.